Hello everyone and welcome to this week's OpenGL water tutorial and this week we're going to be applying the reflection and refraction textures to the water surface using projective texturing. So let's jump straight into the code and we're going to be starting off in the water fragment shader here. Um, so when we want to sample textures we of course need a sampler 2D to sample each texture. So we're going to have two sampler 2Ds here, one for the reflection texture and one for the uh, refraction texture even and these are both going to be uniform variables. Um, so now let's actually sample these textures and we're going to sample them in the usual way. So to get the reflection color, that's just going to be using the texture function, we're going to sample the reflection texture and we're going to, for now, we're going to sample it at the texture coordinates that we're taking in to the fragment shader. And we're going to do exactly the same for the refraction texture here. So we're going to sample the refraction texture this time and once again we're going to sample it at those texture coordinates and now that we've got these two colors we've got the color of the reflect reflect reflection texture we've got the color of the refraction texture and we're simply going to mix them together now um, so we're going to mix the reflection color the refraction color and we're going to mix them equally together so we're going to use a mix value of 0 0.5 so now that we've done that we need to move into the water shader class um, and we have to do our usual stuff so we need an int for both the reflection texture and the refraction texture uniform variables so create two ints like this and then of course we need to get the location of both of them so location reflection texture equals get uniform location and then make sure to spell reflection texture correctly not like I've just done um, and then do exactly the same for the refraction texture and make sure that you've got location refraction texture equals get uniform location refraction texture. Now we need to create a method that's going to load up an int to each of these sampler 2Ds and if you remember uh, from the multi texturing tutorial we do this to indicate which texture unit that sampler should be sampling from. So for the reflection texture we're going to be sampling from texture unit 0 so we have to remember to bind our reflection texture to texture unit 0 and then for the refraction texture we're going to be sampling from texture unit 1 so make sure that second one is location refraction texture and it's sampling from texture unit 1 so into the water renderer class now this is going to need to have access to those reflection and refraction textures so it's going to have to take in the water frame buffers and we're just going to have a instance variable for it up here and then let's set it in the constructor and also just after we start the shader here we're going to want to call that connect texture units method to connect up those texture units so now if we go down a bit in the prepare render method we need to bind the correct textures to the correct texture units um, so to activate a texture unit before we can bind anything to it we call GL active texture and then we choose which texture unit we want to activate um, so we're going to act, uh, make texture unit 0 the active texture unit and then to that texture unit we're of course going to bind the reflection texture as I mentioned earlier um, so we call GL bind texture it's a 2D texture and we want to bind the reflection texture to texture unit 0 and then of course we have to do exactly the same for the refraction texture but we're binding this to texture unit 1 and don't forget to change this to fbos.get refraction texture so we've got all that set up now uh, so we just have to go into the main game loop and we need to set some stuff up here so the water frame buffers need to be created a bit earlier now before the water renderer um, and we don't need any of this GUI stuff anymore so I'm going to get rid of that and I've got to remember to put the water frame buffers object into the water renderer constructor and that should be it so we can go ahead and run that and you can see that both the refraction and reflection textures are textured onto the water quad now but it looks horrible it's, it's a total disaster and that's because we need to use projective texturing so I think the easiest way to show you how projective texturing works is for me to actually do it myself in an image editor. So here is the reflection texture for the scene at a certain point in time and I've made it fill up the whole display here. Before I do anything else though I'm going to flip it upside down because it is a reflection 
And then onto this, I'm going to overlay a picture of the whole scene, which would be rendered to the screen with the water quad as well. And this was taken at the same point in time as the reflection texture. So we want to texture the reflection texture onto this blue water quad. And I can actually do this here by simply rubbing away this layer to reveal the reflection texture below. And as you can see, the reflection texture is now perfectly textured to the water quad, creating a nice reflection of the scene in the water. And the same, of course, would work with the refraction texture, and it's hopefully a bit more obvious to see why that would work. So how do we go about implementing this in our shader code? Well, let's say that we want to sample the texture for this point on the water quad. We need to find out the correct UV texture coordinates to sample this texture at, and if we actually find out the screen space coordinates for this point on the water quad, then we can actually use those exact same coordinates to sample the reflection or the refraction texture. So how do we find the screen space coordinates of a point on the water quad? Well, if you watched my tutorial on mouse picking, then you'll have seen me cover this in a fair amount of detail, and I also referred to this tutorial here, which shows how to convert to different spaces. In the water vertex shader, we already have the clip space coordinates because we've multiplied the vertex position by the model matrix, the view matrix, and the projection matrix already. So the next step is to convert to normalized device space. And as you can see here, to do that, we need to do perspective division. And to do that, we just need to divide the clip space coordinates by their W components. So let's now implement that in the code. So in the water fragment shader, we no longer need to take in the VEC2 texture coordinate, so let's delete that. And in the water vertex shader, we no longer need to output the VEC2 texture coordinates, so we'll delete that. And we don't need to calculate the texture coordinates down here. What we do need to output, however, is the clip space coordinates of this vertex. And that's going to be a VEC4 called clip space. And then, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the clip space coordinates are equal to the vertex position multiplied by the model matrix, view matrix, and projection matrix, so all of this. So let's copy and paste that here. And then seeing as we don't want to do all those matrix calculations twice, we can just set GL position equal to clip space. So now in the water fragment shader, we need to take in that VEC4 clip space, so in VEC4 clip space. And we now need to convert that clip space to normalized device space and as I showed earlier, we can do that by using perspective division. And to do that, uh, firstly, we're only interested in the X and Y components here. And we just divide by the W component to carry out the perspective division and to convert to normalized device space. So now we've got the coordinates of any given point on the water quad in this coordinate system. But to sample a texture, we have to give the coordinates in this coordinate system. Luckily, the conversion between the two coordinate systems is very easy, and all we need to do is to first divide by 2, and then add 0.5. And that will give us the screen space coordinates of any given point of the water quad in this coordinate system, and then we can use those exact same coordinates to sample the textures. So let's now do that conversion in the code, uh, so we divide by 2 and we add 0.5 and that will now give us the screen space coordinates that we need. So the refraction texture coordinates are simply going to be equal to uh, the normalized device coordinates that we've just calculated. This line's a bit pointless but just to make things obvious as to what we're doing. And then the reflection texture coordinates are also going to be equal to those normalized device coordinates, those screen space coordinates that we calculated, but because it's a reflection, we need to invert the Y coordinate there. We need to tip it upside down uh, so that it's reflected. So now we can use the refraction texture coordinates to sample the refraction texture and use the reflection texture coordinates to sample the reflection texture. Make sure you get those the right way round there. And that should be everything. So that should now have implemented projective texturing. And as you can see, it has, and it is all working fine. You can see the reflection, and you can see that the water looks slightly transparent as well. So that is it for this week. Next time, I think we're probably going to be making the water look like it's rippling, and we're going to be doing that by using DUDV maps. If you haven't already seen yesterday's devlog video, then do give that a watch. A link to that is on the screen now, and there were a few new areas in the game this week to check out. 
You can get in touch with me via any of my social media pages, links are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a fantastic week and I will see you all next time.